the full story of Yukimi's Revenge with John Smith, Eminence in Shadow, Season 2 cut content from any news. Let's see what he has to say. Yukime's story isn't something the anime particularly focused on, but we did get a general idea of what her motivations were. Geten had killed her mother back when she was younger, and it was because of that that she climbed her way into power in order to- It's so crazy to me the amount of gaslighting Geten was doing. He straight up killed her mom, and he was, he was like, D You did this to yourself! Everyone here died because of you, even the I'm the one that killed him. Apparently, he didn't kill the rest of the village, only Geten's mom, but it's just funny to me. When he's like gaslighting, saying, You did this! With a fucking blade in his hand. Back when she was younger, and it was because of that that she climbed her way into power in order to find him again. It's what the anime didn't include to develop this that really diminishes Geten's presence as a character in all this. Oh. Like, after getting to know what it was Geten did to earn Yukime's love, it really makes you feel like he too was just a victim of the circumstances. Yeah, I I started feeling really fucking bad. I mean, he still took the fucking pills and he's trying to force it on people. And as soon as people said no, he killed them. I, like, he still did that. But definitely when he started crying at the end, I was like, ah, I feel kind of bad. What the fuck? So, as I go through Yukime's entire backstory, hopefully it'll let you appreciate this amazing arc's climax a bit more. I get the entire thing was once again a big misunderstanding, but to Yukime it was definitely something more. I mean, Kanakawa had even made an entire emotional music video framing it that way. What? As for the fight between- They made a fucking music- it sounds like a, it looks like a meme video. Because someone- I forget who said this, but someone in my community said, if, if someone were to watch this John Smith arc, right, of John- this masked man- Like, if someone were to watch it without context, without knowing anything, without like having the subtitles or whatnot, they would just assume that this is like a love story that went wrong and now there's a, there's this like masked guy who's John Smith that's like saving Yukime and now he's gotten like the blessing from like a like a begrudging old boyfriend and like you could definitely just understand it as that right when getting and Sid you'd be surprised to know that that was actually the biggest change in the entire anime so that's a solo video that I'll be uploading tomorrow oh first we'll be talking oh, about oh back this. to back any news with Sid having just devastated Alpha and Shadow Garden, the funds were secure and plan ready to be put into action now. Both Mitsugoshi and the MCA had been able to track them to the Lawless City, but with Sid skipping school 24-7 to hinder their movements, <laughs> that was the closest anyone could- Yeah, what happened to school? I forgot- I forgot we were, were even a student, I swear to god. Are we even a student? No, we're not anymore. Never get to them. It seemed John Smith would always be there to prevent them from getting any closer. That being the case, the counterfeits were sent into circulation no problem and the gold made from doing so was stowed away safely. All that was left to complete the plan was to turn in the real bills that Yukime had been collecting, then show to the public the MCA didn't have the assets to exchange them all. That would be the trigger that would start the credit crisis. Sid didn't see the need for Yukime to do this herself, but to her this was the most important part of her plan. It was an inquiry that had led to the story of why Yukime needed to take everything away from Geten. So, if we go back to when Yukime was the young age of 14, she was still being raised by her mother in a small village deep within Beast Folk territory. Arranged marriage, right? Back then, she was still just a one-tailed fox, but her mother, who was the strongest... She's a three-tailed fox. How does she awaken all nine tails? I want to know more about that. ...out of everyone was the village's main hunter with a total of three tails. It was often that she would venture out in order to find whatever she could to provide for everyone. It was on one of those days that she was doing just that, though, that their village would be attacked by a separate hostile tribe. This... Also, did Yukimi ever have a dad? Like, what happened to him? The village in which the only capable person was gone was now left with no choice but to run and hide as another tribe invaded and attacked them. Yukime didn't stay hidden for long, though, as it was only a matter of time before she was found and being dragged out before those who were hunting her. It was right as she thought things were about to be over, though, that that's when a man would jump in and cut down the cruel people. Get on, save them! It was a noble member of the reinforcements from their allies of the Great Wolf Clan. Oh, a shit. man we currently know as the Blind Swordsman Getin. To us, we may consider him the villain of the story, but to Yukime, who had just been rescued, Getin was nothing more than the person to whom she owed her life to. He was the knight in shining armor who had jumped in to save her. So, with her being 14 and him being 17, it was only natural- <sighs> That could've gone so much worse. That, that could've gone so much worse, oh god. <laughs> you know, with the enemy and the way that they, was, they deal with fucking young girls and age gaps, oh god, thank god, he's still under age. Oh my god, bro, oh. Bro, imagine Geta was like fucking 25 or some shit, oh god. Natural that he be the first person that she fall for. 
a person with whom our relationship would have been beneficial to everyone. You see, with the Therian Throat Lands being in the state of conflict, men. So, oh, oh shit. Ah oh, shit. Yuki may no, hide but, as another. No, no, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. I, I, know, I know where we were. But the interesting thing is this, right? The fucking hero. The hero is actually not a hero, apparently, right? Because, like, you, you saw, like, a frame of this person. No. The Shiva person is not the beast man hero that I thought on the bottle, right? Because remember, there's like a human, there is an elf, and there is a beast man, right? So, but they're all like girls. All the heroes are apparently like waifus. Like mentioned in the anime, the idea of marrying these two in order to solidify the position of their alliance was the obvious next step in a time where allies were extremely important. Yukime, as the daughter of the village's only three-tailed spirit fox, would happily marry the son of the great wolves' patriarch, Getin. It was a perfect match in which both had equal- Is Delta from the same wolf clan? How does that work? Because Delta is also, also a wolf, right? I, I initially thought that Getan is that like fucking Delta's dad? Like, what's going on? ...amounts of affection for each other. The marriage wasn't allowed to happen until Yukime was 15, though, so until then, not- all right, guys, you know, I think we're pushing it here. You know, it's great that, you know, Getan saved Yukime and everything. And sure, they might be in love. You got a 14 and a 17 year old. But let's just at least, you know, let's, let's just at least wait till she's 15, huh? Like, that makes a fucking difference. Like, I don't know. Back in the day, like, things were fucking different. Uh, they're all beast people. Their ages are all over the place. Delta's dog people. Oh, I thought it was like wolf dog, kind of like, all kind of like mixed into one. But. Yep, great that you waited for 15. That makes, yep, great, great. Neither were allowed to live with each other. Instead, the two would have to just visit whenever was possible. So, despite living in different villages, Getin would make the journey to come and see Aww. Yukime often. It was any time he could that he would always venture. What the fuck? You giving me a, such a fucking rom-com story right now to nowhere? I feel just bad for Getin now. Oh, man. Venture over and spend as much time as possible with her. They were the days in which both found they treasured the most. Even more so for Yukime as she believed these to be her happiest. It didn't matter That's that the up. two weren't formally married yet because the time they shared now was the moment she wished would go on forever. Unfortunately, life wasn't so kind as to let that continue as a nearby conflict would bring an end to all of it. This conflict taking place between two major tribes nearby had come to involve both the spirit foxes and the great wolves. Oh? They were being forced to pick a side, and depending on which they chose, they would either be forcibly conscripted or forced to retaliate. There was no choice in which an enemy wouldn't be made here. Who were they? No matter what they did, war and fighting was going to be inevitable. So, it was at the very last moment before making a decision that both the wolves and foxes would decide to do nothing. They had picked neither side in hopes of not getting involved with any of them. Probably a smart that decision. That seemed like a good way but... to avoid conflict at the time, but this decision to remain neutral would ultimately be the one that would destroy them. You see, by thinking... No, get time to destroy them. ...thinking their joint strength and wisdom was enough to have them survive on their own, the cruel nature of war had set out to prove them otherwise. In only a single night after making their decision, both their villages were wiped out instantly. Jesus Christ. Not a single person could resist the wave of destruction. <laughs> I, this is not the first time we've seen like enemies cover like um, topics like this. And we use the Mushoku Tensei, um, the, I forget the name of the village, but this is the Mushoku Tensei Beastman village getting caught on fire. I swear to God, we've seen something like this before too, when we're talking about different beast people being like destroyed. That had come for them. Getin did try to fight back as the strongest, but when all was said and done, the only person he was able to save was Yukime. Oh. So, on the morning after, when the Man, this backstory is adding a lot more to Getin. This backstory is crazy, yeah. I mean, because I thought, from what I'm watching from the anime, it just looked like one day, the Cult of Diablos just approached Getin, and they were like, you know what? Side with us? Or you did. Take these pills? Or you did. And Getin was like, all right, I'll take these pills. Then get them went to you, Kimi Phillips, and said, "Guys, take these pills, or you did." And the mom was like, "No." And then Getan said, "You did." And then she blamed, and then he blamed it all on Yukime. I thought that was pretty much it. And I'm sure when I when I reduce his story like that, then yeah, obviously that does kind of happen. But like all this stuff before happened too. Getan was like trying to save them and stuff. Instruction was made clear. Get that is the abridged version. You're right. You did. Getin cursed his weakness and inability to save anything. 
he was enraged by his own helplessness at and this is where he reaches out for the cult of diablo's power the face of those who were stronger yukime had tried to comfort him by saying it wasn't his fault but oh that's fucked up because remember what he says if only i had that power you remember that shit when Getan was defeated and he's like crying in the snow as John Smith's like beating his face down. And he's just saying, if only I had this power, I could have like protected everybody. That's fucked up. <laughs> this backstory just getting sadder and sadder. What the fuck? I just want my meme anime. It was words like that that only went to make him even more angry. They were words that led him to say more than he should have. What I mean is that in this fit of rage, Getan had started to blame Yukime's mother. So where did he get these pills from, though? So I thought the cult of Diablos attacked his village and then forced them to take the pill. But it's, now it's sounding like, no, it was some random other entity that attacked the village. And now Getan is so desperate for power, somehow then a random cult of Diablos member was like, hey, we got some pills here, you want to take them? What's going on here? If it wasn't for her and her resistance against using the pills, then perhaps their friends and family would still be alive today. If they had just listened and made themselves more powerful, then perhaps their villages may have been able to fend off the attacks and survive all this. Maybe. It's because they didn't, though, that no one was capable of defending themselves when this invasion happened. It was an attack that Getin knew they could have prepared for, but were huh. instead persuaded not to because of, well, you know. Because <laughs> she did. Because <laughs> Getan killed the mom, but I, I thought that he slaughtered the entire village. I thought after they, like, ignored Getan's, like, request to take the pills, but... No, they were all under attack. Katan's still upset that they could have like all protected themselves. They could have all fought if they had this power. That being the case, it's when the invaders had come and started to attack that Getin would seize this opportunity and go for his vengeance. Who are these He had snuck invaders? up behind Yukime's mother during the chaos of it all, then chopped her head clean off before she could even know. One more time, Anonymous. One more. Say it to me one more time. What's the what, what is the motivation here from Getan? What's this? Attack that Getan would seize this opportunity and go for his vengeance. Getan would seize this opportunity and go for his vengeance. Where do you think this vengeance is directed to? Yukime's mom who rejected the pills, or the people attacking the village? He had snuck up behind Yukime's mother during the chaos of it all, then chopped her head clean off before. What? This is your vengeance? Chopping your fucking wife's mom is your vengeance because she fucking said no for you guys taking pills? I don't know, man. I feel like the, the things get a little bit messy here. It's like I'm trying to understand. I'm, I'm trying to be very lenient and trying to be very understanding of his past. But at the same time, when I hear shit like this, I'm like, hmm, sounds a little dumb. Or she could even notice him. Poor Yukime had thought her mother was just missing in all the mayhem, but yeah, her what head's missing. was revealing here was something far more tragic. He had just unveiled the most gut-wrenching betrayal. You mom did. Getin would then try to justify his actions, Take but these pills, no girl. words were going to change Yukime's opinion of him now. There was no amount of pleading and begging that would get her to accept the power that he was offering. So, as Yukime's rejection signified her betrayal, Getin would be left with no choice but to resort to other methods to get... <laughs> Yes, the only method left. So if she says no, what do you do? You grab your fucking sword and slash her, I guess. But this is where you hear stylish Vandisler come in. Her to listen. He would strike her back. And what tell the her to fuck? Get the that? I mean, no. I, I look, look, look. His backstory was sad. It, it was sad, but then some of the actions he's doing now, it's just so unhinged that I, all the sadness just goes Urging away. Urging her to accept that revenge isn't something to be afraid of. Yukime would grasp and crawl to try and get away, but with each subsequent motion, Getin would slice her back another time. Again and again, fuck? he would rain his Multiple? sword down, hoping eventually she would understand him. Bro, I thought it was it one was slash! She could move no more, that Getin would rest his foot atop her wounds, then urge her one last time to accept no, his power. This is, okay, okay, also, okay, this is, no, this is terrible, this is terrible. We need to, we, Getin got everything he got coming, everything, he deserved that shit. But she could join him, then go out and seek revenge with him. Yukime still wouldn't be swayed though, so it was right as she would say no one final time that a strange voice would be heard and then- <laughs> Yahoo! <laughs> Give me all your money! Mario shows up out of where- Woohoo! <laughs> Even back then, you know how everyone in this like, in this show, Eminence and Shadow, everyone's having such a serious moment. And Sid is just in his own different world, just having fun, just not even giving a fuck about what the current struggles of the side characters are. 
<laughs> there's just huge conflict going on and Sid just shows up like imagine this right this is a village that just got raided right this village is on fire everyone is like dead it's just getting plundered and raided what the fuck is Styles Banislayer doing here? He's probably here to fucking loot Yukimi's dead parents, bro. He, Sid, Styles Banislayer straight up looting the dead bodies of Yukimi's like comrades. That's what's happening right now, dude. Then nothing, leading her to pass out before getting to see any more of it. It was by the time she would awake that her wounds would be healed and bleeding stopped. Getin was nowhere to be found, and alongside the bodies of her friends and neighbors, there were also the corpses of all their attackers. Eventually, Yukime would find her mother's decapitated body too, and Jesus. it would be that image which she would ingrain into her memory. That would be the image she would use in order to remember what it was she was fighting for. Everything she'd loved had just been slaughtered or burned to the ground, so the only thing she had left now was- Vengeance! A vengeance she knew she would need Shadow's help to get. So, as Yukime would declare this as her true intent, she would also ask for forgiveness for having lied to Shadow about it. She had revealed that this entire time she was just using him, and it was for that that she felt that she was sorry for. What did he- what did John Smith say after that? I forget this happened. What- did, was he like, oh, I didn't even know? Of course, Sid was just trying to remember why this situation sounded so familiar to him, so it was about halfway through that okay. he just stopped paying attention to her, <laughs> leading the two to part ways without- Stop the paying attention! He was like, hmm. This sounds very familiar with some kind of plot. Did I, am I responsible for this? Should I be remembering this? Do I even care? No, I don't give a fuck. I'm just here to be stylish. Sorry. Super edito agent. So I'm just gonna say fuck it. I'm, not, I'm just gonna forget. But Sid so much as acknowledging her tragic past. Now. I find it funny that this whole thing has come pretty much full circle because the whole reason Sid has saved Yukime twice now was pretty much for money and that was it. Yeah. I know Yukime and just money. both see it another way, but as the way things truly are- We got Getan's like dying blessing. It's like, you, you're so exceptionally strong. Please protect Yukime. You know, I'll give you my precious. And it's like, where the money at? Where, where, where is your precious? Is it down here? Should I shovel here? This is how it actually is. If we were to focus solely on Yukime though, if that emotional music video wasn't enough to paint the story in the way that- Okay, this emotional music video is fucking hilarious. I'm just like- The Katakawa is actually memeing. If they made an emotional music story, like a love story, some kind of sad story. But you know in John Smith's head, there's not a single thought of like romantic, you know, like or like that kind of themes going on. It's just random out of context scenes of elite agents being elite and just making it look like a romantic heartfelt story. That she perceives it, tomorrow's video of the fight certainly will. You'll get to see just how far Yukime's delusion with Shadow goes. It does feel kind of weird calling it that, but at the end of the day, any affection Yukime thinks Shadow has for her really is just delusion. A convenient sequence of events that happened to paint this picture mm. of Shadow fighting for her sake. Ah! Delusion. Yeah, I guess it kind of is delusion. But at the end of the day... Everyone is a delusion around Shadow. Even, even all the Shadow Garden girls, what their beliefs are, they're all delusions. So I feel like we can have, we can let Yukimi take this, you know? I feel bad for her. Like, yeah, like, let her have this one. But yeah, that's the full story behind Yukime. I was going to combine this with the John Smith versus Oh Mechon yeah. Fight, but that's tomorrow. Tomorrow, another Annie's video is dropping. Mm -mm, we eating good. After seeing all the changes they made for that, I figured it would just be easier to separate the two. Okay. So you can expect that video out sometime tomorrow. Now, if you want to find out all this cut content earlier, you can oh. check out my streams every Sunday where twitch.tv any news underscore please go to his channel. Give him a like, give him a sub. He gives great content on just like the shows that we're watching, but with just more cut content, right? It always gives me more content. Yukime, it's I'm just glad that like this backstory with Getan, I'm not gonna lie, I thought it was a fucking joke. <laughs> I just saw Getan. Okay, cause imagine this. Getan shows out of nowhere. He says, take these pills or you're going to die. And Yukimi with mom's like, no. And Getan kills her. And then Getan points to Yukimi. You just killed your own mother. This is your fault. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? So I thought, all right, whatever. Just some kind of sad backstory. They used to be lovers and then shit went down. He wanted more power. People didn't, people rejected the power. Getan went crazy. And the rest is, you know, what, what we know it. But it's more sad with more context like this, right? It's, it's a little bit more sad. It's a little bit more sad, but at the same time, he still deserved it. 
I think what's sadder is Yukimi's delusion, his love for Shadow. Like, uh, I mean, I'm just glad that Yukimi's still around because at the end of the Lawless City arc, I was just sad that, oh, we got introduced to these cool new character styles, but they're just done. Like, I don't give a shit about Black Jugga Jugga going away, but after the Lawless City, we're not going to have Yukimi anymore. Psych. Yukimi appears in the train, and then we get the John Smith arc. And then at the end of this arc, I'm like, oh, I guess this is the end of Yukimi. Psych. Shadow Garden and what's her clan? Like White Fox or something? The corporations unite. So now we actually have more Yukimi content. And technically, she's misunderstanding us as her lover. So I'm sure that'll come into play. But hey, we do these reactions live on stream on YouTube and Twitch. 7 a.m. PST every weekday. Hope to see you there.